Hello everyone and welcome back to another video where I am in front of the camera again um, because it's good fun. So obviously we had an absolute cracker of a Grand Prix yesterday and I genuinely just really wanted to sit down and talk about it with you. So yeah, I'm here today to tell you why I personally believe the 2021 Hungarian Grand Prix was one of the best Grand Prix in a while. Obviously, it didn't really go my way for um, Mr. Lando Norris. Um, however, just because your favorite driver is not in the race anymore doesn't mean it's not a good race. Um, I think it's probably worth addressing. It was set up to be an amazing race ever since the rain started coming down beforehand. The drivers got to the grid, they didn't quite know which tyres to use, the track was greasy, so we had a f we had everyone on inters for the first for the first bit, and obviously that that made for an in incredibly frantic start. With Valtteri Bottas obviously pile driving the back of Lando Norris, which made my blood boil. This then caused a chain reaction, um, so Bottas smacked into the back of Lando, who smacked into the side of Verstappen, whilst Bottas smacked into the side of Perez, whilst further along to the side, flipping Stroll smacked into the side of Leclerc, who smacked into the side of Ricardo. It looked like an F1 2021 open lobby. Um, I think that's the only thing you can really compare it to. Um, it was just chaos. And obviously this left us with a really, really strange grid order um, with Lewis leading, um, who just somehow managed to avoid all of turn one. We had Esteban Ocon in P2, Sebastian Vettel in P3, um, was it Latifi in P4? Weird, man. It was very strange. Because even at this point, you still kind of expected everyone to fight back through and kind of give us the standard the standard finishing order. In Sergio Perez uh, retired from the race on lap one, as did Valtteri Bottas. So we've lost two of the big boys straight away, basically. Um, somehow, uh, Verstappen's suspension wasn't damaged after the collision with Lando. I find it amazing that... Lando's suspension wasn't damaged. Obviously, big damage to both cars, um, which obviously meant Max didn't have the best race of his career. Um, he was kind of stuck fighting Haas for a very long time and came home to finish P9 in the end after Vettel's disqualification. So at least he got points. Lando didn't. <laughs> Then there was obviously the unpredictability of the weather um, and for the restart. So we had Lewis Hamilton on the grid by himself on intermediate tyres, whilst everyone else into the pits for some slicks. So Lewis is there on his own. It's the strangest thing I've ever seen, starting the race with one car. And obviously Russell managed to get around everyone in the pits, which, well, he later had to give them back, but... That was that was quite funny as well. So we had we, we had Russell effectively leading for a bit, and it kind of it filtered back through. And there was Ocon from Vettel from Latifi, and this was just the order. Lewis was well back in last at this point after his pit stop. So that was that was strange. It was it was it was strange to say the least. To say it's it's races like this that that are typically the best races. Races like this, 2019 Germany. Um, 2020 Monza, the ones where you just have no idea what's going on because the typical leaders are just nowhere, you know? And I must admit, I thought Vettel was going to overtake Ocon, um, but that just never came about. He never got close enough, and they only went wheel to wheel once, um, but a back marker was in the way anyway, so we couldn't actually get past. And yeah, obviously Ocon, Esteban Ocon, won the race in an Alpine, which was very cool. But obviously, uh, Hamilton's comeback drive was very good. Um, I mean, it's to be expected. You expect him to um, be able to drive back through like that. So he pulled a two-stopper. Wait. Yeah, a two-stopper in order to try and recreate what happened in 2019 when he hunted down Max. However, I don't personally believe he anticipated how much of a brick wall Fernando Alonso would be. That defensive driving was some of the best defensive driving I have ever seen. And even by Alonso's standards, it was just incredible. I don't even know how long the fight lasted. I know it was a matter of around 10 laps um, of just Alonso just placing his car so well. There was even contact at one point, but it was such good, hard, fair racing. That's why I really like it when two really respectful drivers go up against each other. So, well, say like Kimi Raikkonen... Alonso and like Lewis for instance Alonso and Lewis the, the, the racing was so respectful even if Lewis moaned a bit which I think is just second nature at this point but yeah great drive by Fernando to um, hold Lewis up obviously Lewis managed to go and hunt down signs straight away after and get past pick up P3 which would then turn P2 when Vettel unfortunately got disqualified from the race for um, not having the litre of fuel fuel left in his Aston Martin car and obviously 
the elephant in the room, Esteban Ocon won the flipping race. I mean, in the past, I've said that Ocon is like the most forgettable driver on the grid, and I am so sorry, Esteban. He drove incredibly well yesterday when the, well, the opportunity was presented to him right there on lap one, and he took it, and he avoided all the contact, drove incredibly until the end of the race to hold back Vettel, a four-time champion, by the way. So yeah. Well done Esteban Ocon. The Alonso Hamilton battle was so good that I genuinely just forgot who was leading. And then when I like check up at the time tower, I'm like, hold up, just love races like this. Like this is when Formula One like is at its peak, you know. Anyway, um, I think that pretty much covers the race. If you did enjoy this video and you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Um, and if you do so, I will see you all in the next video. But until then, take care and thank you very much for watching.